Okay, so uh, let's begin. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you all here. Uh, welcome to the Take a Walk on the Safe Side webinar, where we'll talk about using feature flags with Sentry and Commodore. Uh, say hello to our panelists today, Etiel Schwartz. Hey, everyone. Founding CDO at Commodore. And Dustin Bailey, Solutions Engineer at Sentry. And also we have with us Rahul Chabria from Sentry as well. So to, to start things off, uh, I'd like for you to talk about how you use feature flags at Commodore and Center respectively and kind of uh, share a bit about your experience uh, using feature flags. Yeah, sure. Dustin, do you want to start it? <clears throat> sure. Yeah. So feature flags are used at Sentry when it comes to rolling out um, new features in the development process to to internal users to early adopters and eventually um, when those features have proven to be uh, stable to to general access um, i think what we're going to focus on today is how anyone on the call that's already using feature flags in combination with commodore and in combination with sentry can leverage some features within each platform to effectively accelerate decision making when it comes to debugging issues related to feature flags um, and also using some very helpful features within Sentry uh, to also accelerate decision making and perhaps declutter um, decision making when it comes to identifying which issues are specific to which particular set of feature flags or individual flags themselves. And I think the one feature I want to highlight at the outset of this are Sentry tags. So you can set custom key value pairs uh, via the SDK within Sentry across multiple platforms. And this can be very helpful for um, going from, say, a service level within Commodore into the code level uh, for a specific project and actually identifying which feature flag is associated with a particular issue that you're looking at now, um, having traced it from you know, observability at the service level down into the code level, and now you can effectively turn the feature on or off depending on 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 how that's uh, how that feature is is either being adopted or experiencing issues. Over to you, ETL. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Dustin. So Commodore uses feature flag. Like first of all, I'll start with a little bit about what is Commodore, because I think everyone know here know and like use Sentry. Uh, Commodore is a trouble is a Kubernetes troubleshooting platform. Basically, we allow developers and DevOps to troubleshoot issues they encounter in their Kubernetes cluster very easily. What we do is we track the state of the cluster of the services that are running on top of the cluster, combined with the changes that happen across your system to give our users a full single plane of glass of everything that changed in their system and also the effect of those changes. So for example, in Commodore, you can see your service is unhealthy you can see the last deployment that happened in your system, but also to see sentry issues that arose or changes that happen in LaunchDarkly or your own configuration management. So Commodore tracks all of those different data points into a single very nice to use platform and allows our users to troubleshoot efficiently. So we use feature flags not only like uh, as an integration for our platform, but also internally. And uh, we believe that like one of our strength is to give value to our users as fast as possible. And feature flex allows us to open new features, new capabilities to our subset of customers before doing like full blown rollout. And this allows us to develop faster because we have like a very specific customer in mind or we open the feature flag only for us. And this in turn makes the feedback loop a lot faster. So instead of like opening a feature for all customers and it will take months, we open it up only for a selected few. We test it with them and this allows us to get the feedback from the like real live users a lot faster than we could without feature flags. Uh, so we use uh, both like Sentry and, and launch Darby for the feature flag part. And today I'm going to do like an overview on Condor, basically what is the platform then I'm going to show a real life use cases of like one of our customers basically that had an issue with, uh, with uh, one of his services. And uh, he opened the feature flag that basically created a problem in the system. 
And then there was a sentry exception, obviously, and it's sentry recorded. And also, I'm going to show how you can use both Commodore and Sentry to troubleshoot the issues and to understand that change arose due to a feature flag change, but it affected like the whole system. So this is the Commodore platform. We talked about it quite a, a few minutes ago. This allows you to see everything that happened in your cluster. Basically, all of those like green tiles, they are all green cards services are healthy, are services that are running on the production cluster, on the main cluster. So we can filter the services by namespace, the DVD use, the groups they are using, and so on. So I can see over here filtering and see like only with, uh, with related services. And also I can go and click on one of the services to see the complete history and the complete timeline of the service and basically see everything that change. And when I, may, when I say changes, I mean both the infra side, like the Kubernetes side, to see a full diff between the old version and the new version. But more than that, I can also see the changes that happen from the Git perspective. So I can see all of the changes that happened for the web application over the last 24 hours. Uh, yeah, so this is like a full history of the service. And um, now I'm going to jump into a different service, the REST API one, that also has Sentry enabled and it also has a issue or had an issue with one of the with one of the with one of like the, the healthiness of the service. So I can see here in Commodore that I don't only have deployments, but also health issues, sentry exceptions, and launch rocket feature flex that changes. So here I can see there was, there was a launch rocket change, say DB had changed basically. And yeah, from one to zero, change the default variation from false to true, comment very important. Okay, it was an important change. I can see that right after the change, what happened is the service came unhealthy here. But before that, I got an exception from Sentry. So in this use case, uh, I, I express it again, what we saw is a service in Commodore that represents the REST API, a service that is running on top of the Kubernetes cluster. It had a launch rocket feature flag change to change something related to the database. And, and in turn, what happened is a sentry problem and a Kubernetes health issue. So here I'm going to jump over to the sentry issue. And I think I let Dustin maybe go over and do like a quick uh, walkthrough over at the sentry platform and what you can learn from sentry. Awesome, thanks Etl. So this is really cool because what we just saw is from the service level, we were linked via the integration directly into the contextual detail that Sentry collects around code level issues that are specific to the Commodore project that we are just in. So there's a number of things that are linked automatically here contextually. So first and foremost, we have tags. So this is contextual detail that's configurable and collected automatically from Sentry. So you can see environmental tags there, handled tags, uh, mechanism tags. This is where you'd also see feature flag tags if you set this up via the Sentry SDK. Another super, help, super helpful piece of contextual info is the, the stack trace here. So in this case, you can see the exception value, um, the exception type and value, the stack trace here um, that appears to have crashed uh, in non-app code. Uh, it's right above their ETL, the JS tag in app only. Um, <laughs> yep. You can also expand that to look in it if you so choose. Um, yep, and you can get directly to the line of code, which is uh, correlated with the issue. Sentry is really focused on accelerating your decision making here when it comes to being alerted to triaging and to resolving issues in real time. So you also can accelerate decision making on who this issue should be assigned to. So we have issue ownership rules that you can set up based on file paths in the stack trace. Thanks, thanks ETL. Uh, so you have options to do that. You also can associate commits with releases here. So releases, um, you can get suspect commits. So as detail showed commits in at the service level, you can get detail on commits at the code level as well. Um, yep. So we're back in the issue here. So we've talked about uh, accelerating decision-making when it comes to ownership, leveraging contextual detail to triage. 
I think the last, one of the final parts I wanna talk about are breadcrumbs here, which also come as part of this issue context. So this is the chronological series of events leading up to the actual exception in the code base. So this is great uh, in many cases for reproducibility. And these are going to vary depending on your SDK and your platform as to what gets collected here. So if you're running on a, you might see DOM events, if this is a front end based platform, you might see HTTP events and other types of database events. If this is a back end platform, breadcrumbs can be super helpful for, for looking at events leading right up to when the actual exception occurred in the code base. But this is all great because it effectively rolls all of this context into the, the observability layer at the Commodore level. So you can jump directly from Commodore into this, this type of rich context uh, at the Sentry level as well when you're triaging these issues with the deploy. Yeah, you know, great. Uh, do, you, do you want me to show something else, Dustin, in the Sentry platform? Uh, well, yeah. I, could, I could speak to one thing. Um, What's great about this is when Commodore tells you there's an issue, uh, and if it's critical in Sentry through our ecosystem, you should you could also automatically create issues in whatever project management tool you're using. So your team will get notified. Your the right teams will get notified at the right time to fix the right problem. So not only will have the rich context, they'll get the alert from Com they'll get the rich context in Sentry, the alert from Commodore, and have everything they need in the place that they work to go fix it. Um, and that's how we close the loop from like discover to seeing, solving, and then learning. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you show it? Like open Discover? Uh, yeah. If you want, you can open Discover and we can show you how to analyze your events over time. But the ecosystem that I just spoke to requires a little bit more integration. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Uh, no thank you. Thank you, Raul. Uh, anything else we missed about the platform or about the integration? Maybe, maybe I will speak for a second about adding the integration into Commodore. So Commodore, in order to, to do so, we have an app in the Sentry marketplace, but from like the Commodore side, what we need is to have the relevant like uh, environment variable enabled on the pod or like as label or as annotation. And Commodore basically understand that this is a Sentry project. We understand the name of the project and the environment variable. And then we do the matching between the Kubernetes service and Sentry automatically. So you don't really need to work hard in order to make sure everything works. It works as expected, as long as you use like the default um, environment variable to configure Sentry. So the innovation is super easy, like two clicks away and you can have uh, like full, uh, full like working integration between like Sentry and Commodore. So it's very easy. Why don't you show us the integration screen here? Yeah, the integration screen here, I think it's a little bit messy. Let's the demo. But yeah, here you have the integration. Sentry is already installed, so I can't really be not sure. Yeah, I can't really show how, how to install it. Uh, but you can also view the documentation I think, you know, in our website on how to install Sentry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is yeah, uh, how to install. Sentry on Commodore, like for both sides, so the Commodore side and the Sentry side. Mm, okay, anything else on the integration? No, sounds good. Uh, TL, uh, can you please share the the link to the documentation in the chat for yeah, yeah, wants sure, to, sure. I, uh, to to deep dive into uh, yeah, Sentry integration? Yeah, I am sharing, and we are also working on like a new <clears throat> a new integration, so it will be even better. And I want to remind everyone that you can ask questions down below in the Q&A part, and we'll leave time at the end to answer them. So uh, don't hesitate to ask anything that comes to mind. Um, OK, guys, so um, let's uh, move on to talking about best practices. And uh, I want you to share a bit from uh, your customers or experiences you had yourself uh, using Future Flags. and. Uh, there's at least one big uh, big event that happened in uh, recent months uh, that we all know about, but let's talk about the uh, things from the Commodore and Sentry perspective and our customers. So. Uh, yeah, I would say that from like the Commodore perspective, what we usually see is like the first integration that our customers are doing is Kubernetes. And Kubernetes has a lot of like interesting changes and events that affect your overall system health. 
but we do see from our customers that feature select are like the ugly part of CICD. They are less monitored. They do cause a lot of issues. And by making sure that you know every time you open or close or change a feature flag, you can allow yourself to find issues a lot faster, basically reduce the NTTR and allow you to stay in control even if you are using like feature flags to move faster. So I think like the best practice is A, if you're using Condor to enable the integration between Condor and feature flag. But even if you are not using that, I think like a very good practice is sending everything to some other tool just to know when feature packs are enabled or disabled. So it won't like jumpstart and you when you have an issue, you had no deployments or no visible changes. And then you need to resolve to go into your like, feature pack platform in order to understand the change happened because someone somewhere in the organization changed something. So I think like this is the, like, the gist on, on, on my side. And Dustin? Yeah, I can say uh, many of the Sentry customers do utilize feature flags in addition to you, Sentry utilizing feature flags. I think it's important to you to have a standardized process that's well documented and communicated for setting up feature flags and using them internally among teams uh, to sort of coordinate uh, and reduce confusion in that respect. I think when it comes to using Sentry, the feature flags conversation is definitely going on within Sentry across SDKs. Uh, I think the current best practice that exists within the Sentry tool for, um, for incorporating information around feature flags is the tag feature. I already kind of alluded to this at the beginning of the presentation, but again, just to refresh, tags are, are limited in size. They're key value pairs, and I believe the keys are limited to 32 characters, and the values are limited to, I believe, 200 characters. So when it comes to being clear about which issues are linked to which flags, if you're setting code level flags, you have the opportunity to also include that type of metadata within a Sentry tag that may be associated with the new feature. Uh, we do have other options in the SDK for setting extra information. If you need to uh, provide a richer um, or richer detail related to certain features, uh, in order to link that detail to issues. So we, we provide that API as well through the SDK where you can sort of set um, arbitrary information within an object related to a particular feature flag. So I'd probably push folks to explore those two parts of the SDKs if they're interested in incorporating um, their feature flag metadata into or associating it with Sentry issues um, and also being able to to get to the root causes faster when your team is implementing feature flags. Um, if, you, if you don't have the information within your platform or, or, or the, the error rates within your platform for certain flags, Sentry, or Sentry can sort of give you that information, um, provide SDK level uh, APIs to get you to that information quicker. And all these tags are also indexed. I wanna mention that as well. So because they're indexed within Sentry, they're searchable within our Discover tool. We didn't dive too deep into that in this demo, but you can also query across Discover and sort of look at the rates um, for issues containing uh, certain tags for certain releases of your code base. There's a number of different ways that you can incorporate all the metadata that become, eventually becomes indexed within Sentry from Sentry issues, um, specifically within the conversation here related to feature flags, but in, in addition to many other um, applications when it comes to triaging issues and sort of accelerating your, your, the evolution of your product, I guess is, is one thing that we've been talking about here, but also as part of that, you know, squashing issues as they arise um, or knowing that these features are healthy enough to, to deploy to perhaps a larger proportion of your users. Yeah. Good, good tips, Dustin, good tips. Anything else, CTL? Maybe share a story if, uh, that comes to mind from uh, one of our, our customers or yourself. Yeah, I think like the I think that like the the the, sh the thing that we showcase basically one feature flag that crashes your application is something that we see for a lot of customers, and I think like the more tricky part is a feature flag that doesn't necessarily affect your service, like the, it affects someone else in your system. And those kinds of issues are super hard to triage. I think tools such as Commodore and Sentry really helps to pinpoint like the relevant place to look at and to understand 
how to solve the issue and basically when change and why. And, but without that, I would say that like a lot of the people that we see are our customers that are using feature flex are, are a little bit like blindfolded because uh, they don't really know when the things change in their system. So yeah. <clears throat> Anything on your end, uh, Dustin or Rahul, any interesting stories? Or I don't have anything off the top of my head, Raul. Do you have any interesting stories uh, that you'd care to share? Uh, not of a customer's, but there's like an embarrassing one where we installed a feature flagging service on Sentry and slowed it down. <laughs> I'm happy to share that blog post about how we used our own performance monitoring tool to try and fix the problem when we try to use feature flags. Sounds good. Yeah, uh, I'm happy to read it. <laughs> it's for, for, for later. All right, uh, do we have any questions from uh, the audience? Anybody wants to ask anything? Before? Yeah, we, do. We, have, we have three in the Q&A section. All right, so uh, let's start with number one. My feature flags usually impact several services at once, and every incident we have is becoming a game of cat and mouse. Which one is most problematic? What do you suggest to make this process easier to identify the problem? It's coming from Victoria. Yeah, I think Dustin. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was going to say, you feel the services timeline uh, seems like a good candidate for an answer here. So I don't know if you want to speak to that within Commodore. Um, yeah, uh, I think like the service timeline is indeed gives you like both the, the fact that the feature flag changed, but also to see the issue that happened in a specific service. So I think like this is a great way. And the other way, Commodore like very much like Sentry and uh, supports. And tags and annotation in order to do like better cross fitting between the feature flag or to, to the service. So you can also add your own custom tags. And I think you will show it both in Condor and in Sentry. And this will give you like a very easy way to pinpoint the affected service or the affected uh, feature flag. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, sent it, just to sort of mirror some things ETL said, I think you can leverage cross project uh, details in either platform. And, and as I mentioned, Discover is a way for you to query across uh, all of the metadata across projects so that cat and mouse can be, uh, you can sort of, uh, I don't wanna say, you can diminish the cat and mouse or shorten the, the, the time uh, between chasing different things by having the ability to, to query across projects and also to drill down within a project and get perhaps issue ownership or, 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 or other ownership details related to issues to, to effectively communicate a little bit better or to even alert uh, different project teams automatically for issues related to specific projects within Commodore or, well, the project link between Commodore and Sentry, so to speak. All right. Um, next question is from Oren Nino. Uh, do you need to add hooks for the feature flags to be identified by Commodore? Yeah, I think this yeah, for you. Yeah, so the integration is very much like the Commodore Sentry integration, uh, two clicks away. And we integrate with Launch Darkly and also like custom feature flag mechanism. So all you need to do is to enable the feature flag, and Commodore will automatically read the relevant metadata and tags from the feature flag configuration. And we will know how to do the Cross matching between the service and uh, and the feature flag. All right. Um, next question is from anonymous. How do I map center issues to Commodore services? Yeah. Is so yeah. Similar, right? Yeah, and I already answered this when I talked about like the Sentry integration. The real the real mapping is between Sentry projects and Commodore services. Uh, so we know how to read the relevant uh, environment variable annotation and tags that you have on top of your Kubernetes resource. And in this way, we know how to map between a Commodore service and, uh, uh, and the Sentry project. And this way, when you have an issue in your Sentry project, Commodore show it on the service time. All right, we have another question in the, in the chat. Um, 
Are there any best practices to use launch darkly? I think this uh, goes to every feature flag uh, tool. Um, Dustin, ATL, do you have any suggestions for uh, Nadav? Yeah, Dustin, go for it. I was going to say, uh, LaunchDark provides a lot of great documentation when it comes to best practices um, for launching feature flags. But I feel like this is a very general question um, that can be specific to uh, your team, your team's philosophy on, on, on releasing um, feature flags. But I would recommend reading their documentation because I was actually in there recently. And I, I think it's fairly um, descriptive on best practices and use cases for not to not to put it on them, um, but I, I would say that they do a great job over there. Um, okay, next question is from Ben. An interesting question: What is Commodore uh, versus Center in terms of visibility to accept to exceptions? Do they compete? Yeah, so I think you can uh, you can see that like Commodore and Sentry works like best together. Uh, we don't compete. What Condor shows is Sentry issues and also Kubernetes related issues. And that's pretty much it. We don't show like exception. We don't crack exception or have an SDK that is running on your application. So like Sentry is very much focused like both like on the exceptions itself and Commodore more on the high level view of what is happening in the Kubernetes cluster and, and the service. Yeah, I'd have to agree with ETL. It's the the integration effectively rolls all that detail into the observability stack at the system level. So it's a great way to be able to leverage the context, the unique context that each service provide or platform provides um, for debugging complex issues related to deploys. Yeah. I also think we work best together. And another question from Victoria. Uh, does the event Commodore receives from Sentry are just displayed with no context, or what more information do you show? Yeah, so we show all of the like, relevant metadata that Sentry has, or like the, the important types of data that Sentry has. And other than that, we do like encourage our users to go into Sentry to do like the deep dive on the breadcrumbs and like the stack trace itself, because uh, I think that like, Sentry do has like a very good UI. So. We give like the assignee, the level, the project, a couple of more fields in, in terms of like metadata. And in order to deep dive, we just give a link to the relevant situation. All right. Um, another anonymous question. Uh, how can I set up Commodore for my company? Yeah, so we have a free trial. So like come check, it, check us out, very easy to install. And we're basically like two quick clicks away from getting Commodore. Yeah, I see you posted like that. Uh, yeah, here. this is a, a website uh, in the chat. You can just go there and click on the free trial button. Uh, in case you missed it, uh, Raul shared the story of how a center implemented feature flags and accidentally slowed down the service. It's just up there in the chat. So uh, check it out as well. Um, let's see what we are. Oren is asking another question. Can this uh, these services integrate into our uh, MOM? I'm also not sure. MOM? MOM. Dustin, oh, you know, would you, you like know? to elaborate? Is that, is that message oriented middleware? I'm not sure what MOM might be. <laughs> Owen, no, can no, you elaborate no. in the chat, please? Um, in the meantime, there's another question. Will both Center and Commodore alert on the same issues? How do they differ in terms of the level of penetration into our stack? Yeah, so that's I think, a really good question. Yeah, I think I think I already like covered this in the comparison. Center will focus more on the application level. We had an exception. This is the stack trace. Those are the environment variables and so on. Commodore will focus on you have an issue in your cluster, in your service, in a couple of services. So we'll give you more of like a Kubernetes view of the service or at like the service level view, and uh, while simply we bring you more of like the application level view. All right. Dustin, do you have anything to add to that? I, uh, I think the only thing I'll add is that you have control over <clears throat> alerts you receive from Sentry. So you can, you know, we followed the path from Commodore the, via the integration uh, into Sentry. And so you have the option to choose, you know, what part of your workflow you want to incorporate in addition to that. So if you wanted to follow that initially from Commodore into the issue and then assign some folks on your team the issue, you have the option to 
set different alerting options. So if it's a page or duty or Microsoft Teams or Slack, you, you know, you have the flexibility to sort of maintain the integration as we showed it or to add additional alerts as, as necessary. All right, and um, Nadav, uh, Oren, who is it? Yeah. What about the MOM, is it mom? Otherwise we can't answer the question. All right. I have, yet, I have yet to tell my mom about Sentry, so. <laughs> <laughs> Does your mom integrate with uh, Commodore? I mean, uh, uh, well, I don't know, I'll have to ask her. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it offline. Uh, any more questions uh, from yeah. the audience? No, no, no more questions. Okay, so uh, let's wrap this up, guys. Any uh, last words before we go? No, I think like if you are using Sentry, you should use Commodore. And if you use Commodore, like go check Sentry. And uh, I think the integration between both of these tools can give our, like the users a full visibility on what is happening in their system on all different layers of the stack. So it's great. And Dustin, you know, wrap up on your side. Yeah, I feel like uh, I, anything I say is gonna reinforce kind of what you just said. I think the, the timeline within Commodore is very cool. Uh, being able to to look at multiple service, services overlaid and, and to be able to track all of the issues and how those issues ripple through different services and also the, the integration with Sentry being able to, to effectively roll developer level context into the observability layer. I think both those things combined is, is a great um, approach to managing the complexity of a, of a growing distributed system. So um, I think that's probably how I'll sum it up myself, but I'll kick it over to Raul in case he has anything else uh, Sentry or Commodore related he wants to finish up with. It's always hard to follow Dustin because he does such a great job capturing it. Um, I just wanted to echo what ETL said. We also have a free product. You can try both of our tools absolutely free. Uh, uh, all of our integrations are free for 14 days. So you can set up Commodore and Sentry and we're always accessible on Twitter as well. So if you have any other questions after here, you can uh, reach us at Twitter at Get Sentry. All right, Thank so uh, let's wrap this up. Uh, it's uh, uh, same for Commodore, follow us on social media, on Twitter and uh, Glad to have this uh, event. It's, uh, it was uh, short and sweet and very interesting. Um, so thanks, everyone. I'm uh, Udi, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good day or night, wherever you are in the world. Bye, everyone. Bye.